Hey guys, I'm Sharon from Mommy Runs It. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I want to talk to you today about two procedures, uh, both of which I unfortunately had this week. One is called a myelogram, and the other is a corrective procedure called a blood patch. Um, if you've had a myelogram, or uh, if you've had a blood patch, then you know where I'm going with this. But um, let me tell you a little bit about the backstory of how I ended up having both of these procedures this week and what they both are. So if we start back where uh, we were last time we talked, I was still in physical therapy for my SI joint dysfunction. Physical therapy wasn't helping a whole lot. Um, in fact, I, I wasn't seeing any improvement. If anything, I was uh, seeing a worsening in my pain. So. Uh, I finally decided to see my primary care physician who referred me to have some imaging done. And uh, I was really glad about this uh, because I haven't had any imaging done since three months post-op, which was August of 2016. So I was really curious to see uh, my hardware, make sure everything was where it was supposed to be, see if my bones suffused, see what was going on in there. Um, I was really pleased to finally have someone who wanted to image me. So, um, he referred me for a CT scan. I went to the imaging facility the next day and uh, was all set to go. It was easy, um, which as you might guess, means that it didn't go as planned. So it didn't, as I was online to check in to have my CT scan. The radiology technician was on the phone with my doctor and they figured out that they had, um, my doctor had ordered the wrong procedure. What he really wanted me to have was something called a myelogram. And this was not something that they do at the facility where I had gone. Uh, and it's a little more of a complicated and invasive procedure. So I needed to have some things done in preparation for it. So I was sent home and I uh, had to wait for my myelogram, which was finally scheduled for um, almost two weeks later, which was May 17th. Uh, which was this past Wednesday. So what is a myelogram? Um, when someone has hardware in their back, uh, like I do, I have six screws, four rods, and two spacers. They're all titanium. And the, even though titanium is a non-magnetic uh, metallic substance, it can still cause some um, interference with an MRI. Uh, I've seen the word artifacts used. I don't really know what that means, but um, it may not be the best way to have imaging unless you have a very uh, super powerful MRI machine. And I'm not really sure uh, how you find that out or where you get to one of those. Um, I just know that for me, the myelogram was what was recommended. So the myelogram is uh, where they inject uh, contrast dye into your back, into your spine. Um, and that gives them a clear picture of what's going on with your spine and it goes all the way down into your nerve roots. Let's them really see everything that's going on. Um, and then after the dye is injected, they do x-rays and then a CT scan. Um, as you can imagine, getting the dye into the spinal canal is the tricky part. Uh, that involves a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture. They stick a needle um, all the way into the subarachnoid space of your spine, which is pretty far in and um, they inject the dye, and then they take it from there. I knew going into this procedure that one of the relatively common side effects is something called a spinal headache. If you are a woman and you've had a baby and you had an epidural during pregnancy, uh, while you're giving birth, you may have heard of this spinal headache. So this is basically where there's a hole um, in your spinal canal and your cerebral spinal fluid leaks out of the hole. And this causes a drop of uh, in pressure in your brain and creates a headache that's just basically like a headache unlike you've never had, um, the worst headache of your life. And the signature of this headache is that it gets better when you lay down because then the pressure levels out and it gets worse when you stand up or um, sit up. So I had had a spinal headache once before, and this was back in January of 2016 when I had an epidural pain injection. Now, with an epidural pain injection, the spinal headache is a very uncommon side effect. It's very rare that the um, dural layer would be punctured. The, with a 
a steroid injection, it only goes into the epidural layer. And um, usually the needle goes right where it's supposed to be and there's no problem. For me, it went a little too far in, it punctured my dural layer and caused that cerebral spinal fluid leak and the headache, um, which sent me to the ER with a terrible, terrible headache and neck ache. Because it was such a rare side effect, um, they didn't quite believe uh, me at the ER that that's necessarily what it was. Um, they thought it was a migraine or dehydration, and we had to go through a, a whole um, process to determine that it was a spinal headache because it's just such a rare complication. Um, in contrast, um, the spinal headache is a relatively common side effect of the myelogram. Um, it's not necessarily something you should expect, but I've read statistics, statistics as high as 30 to 40% of, of people get a, a spinal headache after a myelogram. Um, I was hoping for the best. Uh, I had a feeling that this was something that I was going to experience again since I've had it before, but I took the precautions that they recommended. I drank extra fluids. Um, uh, I followed the procedure after the myelogram and just hoped for the best. Okay, so the day of the myelogram, um, I arrived at the radiology clinic at the hospital at 8.30 in the morning. My procedure was supposed to start at 9. And first, a nurse anesthetist, I don't know if I'm saying that correct, the nurse who administers anesthesiology or anesthesia. Yes, is that right? Okay, so a nurse practitioner came in and she positioned the needle um, in my spine. And I think, as I mentioned before, with a myelogram, the needle goes further in than with the epidural pain injection. It goes through the epidural layer, through the dural layer, and then into the subarachnoid space. And that's where they inject the contrast dye. So first the nurse practitioner um, inserted, uh, positioned the needle where it was supposed to be. Then a doctor came in a radiologist and he injected the dye um, and then they sort of tilted me back and forth uh, side to side on a table just to kind of spread the dye and to take the pictures that they needed and the table stood um, all the way up so they took uh, x-rays of me standing um, doing extension and flexion which is um, curving my spine in and out which I'm not able to do much of because I'm fused there, obviously, but those are important um, for any spine specialist to see, those, those x-rays. So um, after my x-rays were done, I got a quick glimpse at them. I saw my screws, everything looked intact, nothing broken, just for my really quick peek. Um, after uh, my x-rays, they wheeled me into um, for a CT scan, and the technicians there uh, had me do a 360 roll on the table twice. And I guess this is sort of to swish around the die, spread it around so it could get everywhere for the CT scan. Then they put me into the CT machine. Um, unlike an MRI, the MRI machine is like a tube and you're in there for a long time. It's pretty uh, uncomfortable. In my opinion, it's fairly unpleasant and loud and not a lot of fun. The CT scan was a piece of cake in comparison. They slid me in, they took some images of my back, and then that was it. So after um, the CT scan was done, they brought me to a hospital room, and then they had me lay flat for four hours. And this was intended to prevent the spinal headache or to do the best that they could to avoid it. By laying flat um, gives everything a chance to settle down, I suppose. And um, that's their normal procedure. So I did what they said. I laid flat for four hours and then I went home and I rested and I, I slept um, and laid flat at home. Um, and I seemed okay. My back hurt a lot. Um, it hurt when the needle went into my back but, um, you know, it was a brief pain. It wasn't anything worse than what I've experienced uh, through this whole process. But the pain in my back afterwards was, it was pretty significant. It was, it was very, very sore and felt like a tight band all around my rib cage. It hurt a lot. And it hurt um, all night Wednesday and it hurt Thursday too. Um, so that's the myelogram. On Friday at three o'clock in the morning, I woke up. One of my kids was sick, so I got up with her at three o'clock in the morning and I had a headache. I hadn't had a headache up until that point. My head felt fine. Um, but at three o'clock in the morning, 
there it was. My head hurt when I stood up. And when I laid back down, the headache went away. So I just had a feeling. I went back to sleep um, for a few hours, but when I woke up in the morning, I stood up and there was the headache I knew. I knew that it was a spinal headache. And I told my husband that we needed to go to the ER, which is exactly what they instructed me to do when I had the myelogram. Um, they said, if you get the spinal headache um, on the third day after the procedure, so my procedure was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I guess this Friday was the third day, they said come into the ER. And I wasn't messing around. I've had the headache before. There's no point in wasting time trying to get rid of it by drinking fluids or having caffeine or taking Tylenol. So he brought me to the ER and this time uh, they knew that it was a spinal headache because I'd had the myelogram and because it's a relatively common side effect. Um, I had the same doctor, um, the radiologist, I had the same technicians, even the same nurses in the ER who took care of me. It was kind of funny, but not really in a good way. Um, so they did a pre procedure called a blood patch. Okay, so a blood patch sounds pretty weird. It is a little bit weird. Um, essentially, it's how they seal the hole. Because you remember, my cerebral spinal fluid is leaking out, and that's why I'm having the headache. So they have to patch up that hole. So what they do is they take a little bit of my own blood, they inject it into my back, and um, it clots and forms a patch over the hole so that the fluid stops leaking. So they have to inject it. So as you guessed, that meant another needle in my back. And this one didn't go all the way into the subarachnoid layer. This one, um, I'm not sure what layer it went into, but it did not go as deep into my back. This one, the radiologist positioned. He took the blood, which came right from my, um, my arm. I had an IV needle there. They took the blood, they popped it in. Um, it was, you know, it, it didn't feel good. It hurt a little bit, but it was a quick procedure. And then I had to go back to a room in the ER and then lay for another four hours, which again was, you know, not super fun. Um, but whatever. So uh, my headache felt better by the time I left the hospital. And that's also the thing with the blood patch. If it's truly a spinal headache and the blood patch, it, the blood patch should correct it. And if it does, your headache will be gone when you stand up. So after four hours of laying down, when I stood up, the headache was gone and I felt good. And my back didn't hurt too bad. Um, it was a little achy, but not nearly as achy as it had been on Wednesday from the myelogram. So um, that's my week. Uh, we had a myelogram on Wednesday, which uh, required me to spend most of the day in the hospital. And then I was back in the ER most of the day on Friday, getting a blood patch um, to correct my spinal headache. So, uh, um, you know, I came home and I felt pretty much better on Friday. Not great, but um, by Saturday, I was feeling pretty good, and this morning, I felt pretty good as well. Still having some of the issues that I was having before. Um, interestingly enough, my SI joint pain um, has relented, which is crazy because I actually stopped physical therapy, so I have no idea why it went away once I stopped physical therapy. But I am having nerve pain um, in my legs and in my hips. So hopefully, once I get the report from the radiologist, I will get some answers and we'll figure out what steps to take next in my treatment. So, um, I am wondering, have you ever had a myelogram? Um, have you ever had a spinal headache? Uh, did you have any other effects? Was your experience the same as mine, different, worse? Um, I've heard, you know, there's always horror stories. I wouldn't call mine a horror story, it was fine. I expected to get a spinal headache and I did get one and then we fixed it up. So it definitely wasn't pleasant, but it was nothing horrific. Um, if you're expecting to have that happen, you know, as long as you go in knowing that this is a possibility and knowing what to do to correct it, then I think, you know, you can be okay. So um, that's my story. Um, please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or get in touch with me on Instagram, the blog, mommyrunsit.com, or uh, anywhere on social media. I love hearing from you, and I'd really love to hear your experience with a myelogram. If you've had one, it's a, definitely a less common procedure. Um, I'd like to hear if your experience was different than mine. So if you could like this video, I would love it. If you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd love it even more. Check out the blog. I've got a giveaway going on until May 24th. Uh, lots of good new stuff there. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening and um, I hope to hear from you. 
Um, have a great afternoon. Thanks. And hit Bye. that big red subscribe button. <laughs> Bye.